Got another one. <laughs> I did not expect this, Ron. <laughs> That's fun. Isn't it? Hello, everyone. Ron Spomer back with Ron Spomer Outdoors and our good friend Chase Fly. If you caught our 308 Winchester week, we did a lot of yeah. shooting with... You've got so many 308 rifles, I could not imagine anybody <laughs> having that many out here. I think I might have one. Nice. <laughs> and I don't very often shoot it. However, what we're going to do now, Chase is a new hunter. He's, he doesn't grow up in a hunting family, and he's really looking forward to getting into it a little bit yeah. more. And he's got this Abolt, or an X-Bolt, X -Bolt. the Browning X-Bolt rifle that he really likes, and he wants to see if he can't get it tuned up for his deer hunting. That's right. And we're just going to see how well he shoots with his ammos of choice. you got a couple different options here. I'm going to start do. off with this Hornady. Yep. Okay, Hornady Superforms. Why don't you load up the magazine? And uh, I'll tell what else is going on. Tell me which brand of suppressor you've got up front. So that is a primary weapon systems BDE. And so it's a, a 3D printed titanium wow. suppressor, as it turns out. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's going to be nice for keeping things quiet. I'm going to still wear some ear protection, but this will really help knock it down. And this is what he wants to get zeroed to see how well he can do. And he's not real confident about long range shooting. So we're just going to see how well he does on the bench, how his trigger control is, whether or not he flinches. I'm going to be watching him, not the target. We're going to have a camera on the target to record the hits. Yep. And we'll just see how well you do. And if you can shoot a pretty nice group and you feel good about it, then we're going to start doing some longer range shooting and some field shooting positions to get you ready to be a hunter. I'd love that because that's one area I've really kind of struggled is just having the confidence to try to attack yeah. those longer range shots. Yeah. And once you attack them and make them, boy, will that build your confidence up. Yeah, I bet. All right, well, let's uh, let her roll. Let me turn on the uh, chronograph before you close your bolt or anything like that, and we'll get your velocities, because we're going to want to build a chart for you on your ballistic drops and drifts. Sounds great. Okay, yeah, we'll put the big camera on, got the targets. I got my oh, ears yeah. in. Yeah, protect your elbow with I'll that, baby. Stabilize, stable as I can get. I can use all the help I can get. <laughs> all right. Let's see. There I can see, clear target. Yeah, looks like pretty decent form. That was quiet. I don't think I even need this. Yeah, likewise. Now, one little tip I'll give you real yes, quick here. Yes, please. This uh, rear sandbag, rabbit ears we call it, yep. you tip it this way because this follows the stock line up. Okay. It's not a big deal. But the other thing, the big deal is to squeeze this for your elevation gotcha. up and down to fine tune it rather okay. than just trying to hold it. That way you're anchored at the back. Perfect. You want this to be anchored down and then up and down and mm -hmm. slide it slightly. And ideally this should come sliding straight back in the bag so you don't want to crank like that. Okay. You want it to follow the line. Can you nice. see what you hit? I I'll can. Check the big lens. And I'm on the red, believe it oh, or not. Oh yes, okay. Um, now, we, I shot that a bunch the other week and it shoots pretty darn well. I think we can trust dialing it up now for this load. Okay. So you are pretty much on your elevation, just where you want to be. Yep. But I want you to come up two and a half inches. Do you know how to, to dial up on your scope? You got all that stuff I figured always out? mix it up, you know, which way to go up or down. So mm -hmm. help me get it straight. I want to follow the up arrow. Yep. Two up inches. means it's going to push your shots up. Or two that. clicks or are we going? So, okay, you've got a, what does it say? One click equals what? Quarter MOA. And what is that at a hundred yards? That's a quarter inch. Yep, quarter inch at 100 yards. So how many of them you need to move it an inch? I need uh, four of them. Yep, and we want to move it two and a half inches. So how many do you need? Okay, then that's uh, 10. 10 of them, you got All it. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Yep. Now, now an easier way to do it, if you have it graduated properly, is to just simply count the numbers. Yeah. One, you got yep. four marks and hit number one. That's yep. one MOA, two MOA, two more clicks, two and a half MOA. Nice. Fast okay. way to do it. You just say, I need four MOA and you dial it to number four. Okay. All right. So now, now at 100 yards, I've got it shooting or I should have it shooting 
about two and a half inches or about two inches above, two and a half inches. Above. I like two and a half high. Knowing what I do about this particular load and its velocity is 2,682 feet per second. Okay. I figured, figured you're going to hit about 250 to 2,700. Yeah. So that tells me you're going to probably want to be about two and a half high now, and you're going to be about peaking at three inches high at 150 yards to 170. Yep. And then 200 yards, you're going to be starting to come down a little bit, probably going to be dead on at about 250 and maybe three to four inches low at 275. Okay. Which would be what, what I would call your maximum point blank range. We'll get all that figured out as we go here. So let's take another shot and I'll make sure we're up two and a half. And I still want to be going for the bullseye. I'm still yes, shooting yes, for the center. Yes, you still aim for the bullseye. Okay. Yeah, when you zero high, you want to aim for the bullseye and then you want your bullet to rise above that at 100 yards, okay. two and a half inches. Keep that butt in the bag if you can. You don't there want it floating. Okay. That's All it. Right. Slide it back to get it. Yes. There we go. Yeah, you're good in the front. Oh, but I'm on the wrong target. Might bring this down a little bit. Oh, you're going. You need to come well, down. If I think if I come down a little bit, then I can use that butt pad a little better. Just a hair. Tell me when you're good. A little more. There. Like perfect. That? Yep, that's perfect. All right, locked Thank you. in. All right. I love that quiet report. Yeah, <laughs> I see. It looks like I'm about an inch and three quarters high. Inch and three quarters. Am I flinching? No. Nope. Um, okay. You look pretty solid. But one thing I would, this is a fine tuning kind of thing. Sure. When you pull the trigger, try not to snap your finger forward. It was, right afterwards? You yes, mean? right afterwards. Just think about pulling back and holding it back. Oh, okay. We call it follow through, and it just seems to help a little bit without jerking the gun off. Yeah, you start right. doing this snappy stuff, and everything starts to become a little bit herky-jerky. Yep. It's kind of an offshoot of flinching. Okay. So think, all right, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to stay back. I'm going to follow through as that bullet goes down range. I'm going to watch it in slow motion. Yeah, the target. right. Okay, I haven't seen one yet, but it's always worth trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, windage was pretty good, consistent? Uh, yeah, that looks like it was slightly to the left, but barely. I mean, let me see here what I'm seeing. Oops, I'm on the wrong target there. Actually, that was that was about a quarter inch to the right, that one. The first okay. one was a quarter inch to the left, so it's probably okay. me. Or it could just be the what the your barrel shoots, okay. when, you know, the ammo and the barrel matching up, probably doing this. And that could be what's going on with your inch and three quarter high instead of two and a half. It could be that that's your natural dispersion with this rifle. So let's not move anything. Try another shot. Okay. And we got 2693 that time. So I think you're going to be right about in that range for your velocity for building your chart. Okay. I'm going to risk my ears open on this one. Cause it sounds pretty quiet to me. Yeah. Nice. Yep, straight back and held it back. Okay. That felt better. Good. You're two inches up. You were one and a half up on your second shot, and your third shot is two inches up. Let's okay. give it let's give it you got enough ammo to give it one more? Oh yeah. Let's give it one I'd more. I'd love to get the practice in. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking we're probably going to give you two more clicks up, but let's just see if this might have a tendency to shot by shot climb a little bit. Yeah. Oh, let me see. Do I still got, I mean, I still got one more like round? got a nice there. floating yeah. barrel, so it shouldn't, but. All right. So aiming for center still. I'm just going to see. Yep. All always right. aim for the center. Hold the finger on the trigger. Yeah, you did a great job that time. That was a nice follow through. Now you said, oop, what was that about? I felt like I flinched. Uh -huh. I don't know that I did, but here I, that was about just an on center, but an inch high, so. Just an inch high. Yeah. All right, now what we're gonna do and is I take might the have average done a little hurt jerky business though. All right, so you've got three shots about an inch apart, so you got a sub, or, or an MOA group. You're right at about minute of angle. That's great, it's vertical. Your horizontals are staying within a quarter inch of each other. Okay, beautifully. good. So that rifle's shooting nicely. Um, but 
that tells us we need to come four clicks up. Four more clicks up. Yeah, because your average is about an inch lower than we want to be. Okay. One, two, three, four. All right. Now let's give ourselves one shot. 2732. It's increasing in velocity as we move along here, too, for some reason. What do you make of that? I don't know. Could be the warm barrel. See, your warmer barrel, you get a more efficient burn in your powder, you get a little more pressure, you get a little faster. Okay. Huh. Nice follow through. Yeah, good. that feels different. That does feel good. 2672. So you're, you're I think we're gonna figure at about 2700 feet per second average on these. Okay. With your velocities this way it's coming in. Now you're up there, bud. You are two and three quarter high on this one. Went How much was that? Two and three quarter inches high. Okay, well that's about right then. Yeah. If you take a so from here to hundred yards, you're always going to be from initially you're an inch and a half under your target because your scope is high. Okay. See, so your bullet is starting off well below your scope. Yep. But at about 30 yards, they should be converging. Okay. And then, because this is angled up in relation to your scope, you're going to be over your line of sight. Okay. And then at 100 yards, it's still on its way up. Yeah. Then 150, you're going to be even a little bit higher. And then it's going to start dropping down. And there's your trajectory out to 300 or so. We're going to see what happens. We're going okay. for 150 yard target now. All right. Now, clear clear your gun. Great. It's open. Cleared. I'm going to remove the uh, chronograph because we've got good readings here. You want to take some numbers down? You got anything to write with? I'll note it in my phone. Okay. You did four shots that were recorded. Your high velocity was 2732. 2732 high. Yep. Your okay. low, 2672. 2672 low. Your average, 2700. <laughs> oh, nice. That it. makes it easy, doesn't it? <laughs> I can't believe 2700 it. 2700 average. Yep. Your extreme spread was 60, and your SD is 25. And for that few of shots, it doesn't mean anything. Standard deviation. Okay. Doesn't mean anything on that few. You got to have at least 10, if not 20 or 40. Okay. Rounds to make any sense on a standard deviation, but the lower that number, the better. Gotcha. Okay, but that's plenty nice accuracy for hunting. You're, yeah, all right. set, man. All right, 2,700 feet per second. We're going to build the chart off of that, but for now, we're just going to... Now, this is a way, if you don't have a ballistics calculator, which is kind of silly because they're free online. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so you can find one. But if you don't have one, you want to do this. Just zero at two and a half, two, three, something high like that. Yeah. And then shoot it at 150 and see how high it is. Record that. Then 200 and then 250. And you'll just see where your bullets are dropping and okay. you'll get your chart that way. Yeah. It's a little more expensive. And then it's just a good it. idea to add that jotted down on a piece of paper. Or yeah, I like to make a little hunting. chart and glue it to my gun. It looks ridiculous. But oh, okay. It's a cheat sheet and you get excited. You see a big yeah. buck and you go, oh gosh, what was my drops again? Yep. You know, a lot of guys will have it on their scopes and that's great. You can put it inside the lid of this one. Yep. But I notice how you broke off because it hit your cap. Yeah. That happens to me all the time that's too. Right. I don't I'll use those anymore. Leave it be, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you could put it on the side of your scope or keep it in your phone or in your pocket. But I like it on a gun because it's always yeah. there. I just put some clear tape over it and there I go and it tells me drops at at. 300 at 400 at 450 at five or whatever we want to put on it Great. and the next next uh line is going to be your 10 mile an hour wind deflections but we won't freak out about that right now we're going to get this drop stuff done what i want you to do is see with your own eyes what happens at 150 yards so line up the 150 yard target yeah. and for the dead center of the red yeah we're gonna see how much higher it goes okay i can do that you gonna run on ammo or you got some more of that to hunt oh with? i got plenty of, i got i got another, another box. box yeah so a box to practice and a box to hunt you know the old pros well, always hopefully say. Hopefully, take me a box, a whole box to get a deer. And then I got problems. The old, the old pros always say, it's better to shoot 17 rounds, getting zeroed and everything down to perfection, and go hunting with three than the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you're out hunting, you don't want to have to rely on 15 shots to get your animal. You want to be so well and well tuned and ready to go that it just takes one. Yeah, that sounds good to me. All right, I'm gonna single feed it. Felt like I flinched there. Where'd you hit? Can you see it? I think, um, oh, yeah. the low one is a left. 
straight up and just a smidgen to the right. Okay, so that's another Where the big uh, red line on top meets the tip of the diamond in the center. So you're only a half inch to the right and you're one, two, three up. Beautiful. Okay, all right. Yeah. So not bad. No, that's okay, perfect, all right. man. Acceptable. Perfect. <laughs> right. Now, you should shoot a three-shot group to get your average, but I'm guessing your next shot might be a quarter inch to a half inch higher. Okay. Close enough, man. All right. I mean, a lot of people are going to say, well, that's stupid. You ought to be a well more well-tuned than that. Well, with ammo prices these days and finding <laughs> enough ammo, I think you're good. That proves to you now you've seen it. Yeah. You know that. Okay, great. If I'm this much higher than my target, 150 yards, I got my deer. Yeah, so I'm the still middle aiming chest. at the center of that deer at that yeah. point. Yeah. So you're going to hit your deer from right here in front of you all the way to 150 yards. Yep. Now let's see what happens at 200. Go above the 150-yard target, shift over to the right, and you'll see a white plate hanging on two posts. Okay. That's and a little that's... white steel plate. I think it's an 8-inch plate. It might be a 10, but if you can hit it, you've hit your deer. All right. And I'm still aiming for the center of that Ed, target. Aim center on that one, and you're going to be a little bit high yet, but not 3 inches anymore. All right. You're probably more like... Two inches high, inch and three quarters, something like that. I'm actually going to watch uh, on the big lens here. Okay. To see exactly where you hit. Here it goes. Okay. Well, you got yourself a deer. Yeah, I moved it. That yeah, might I be can't, a good thing. I can't say for sure where you hit, high, low, or in between, but... Again, it's a confidence booster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is this is the most consistent I've shot yet, so thank you. Of course, you're shooting off a bench, and you're probably not going to uh, pack that out I there, right? I don't think I will. Okay. All right. Camera is uh, is rolling for your 300-yard shot. Okay, and remind me again, so I want to aim for the, at 300 yards, if this is a deer, I'm still aiming at the center. Yeah. Well, not necessarily for your deer, but for your discovery trip right here. Ah, excellent. You're going okay. to see how much your bullet drops from your aim point. Okay. That's All what right. we're looking so for So I'm here. aiming for the center yes. of the top target. And we're probably going to get some wind deflection too, but I don't want to get into that until we see what happens. Like if we shoot so far to the right, I'll say that was your wind deflection. Okay. Probably can't find it in your scope, right? Nope. Now I think I can see it on here and it looks like you're down about one, two, three, four inches. Nope. Yeah. I think that's it. Four inches low? Four inches of drop is all. That impresses the heck out of me. Is that right? What would you expect? I was expecting double that. Okay. But I'm not I'm not an expert on those ballistics of the 308 with that velocity, 2700. You know, I'm usually shooting something at 29 to 3100. Huh, with okay. similar ballistics coefficients on my bullets. But I'm seeing a hole at four, but maybe there's another one. That was the one that I'd seen. I thought there was only one hole in that paper. Maybe, yeah, that's... Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're in the red, four down. You want to waste another one? Yep. Let's confirm. Gladly. Okay, give it another one. <laughs> well, it felt good. Tell you what, with that suppressor, I feel like I could shoot all day. You've got a one inch group, dude. No kidding. This one is, I think, three inches. Long. Well, man, I might have found the gun, <laughs> the ammo, and the teacher for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this you've got one news. right over the top of each other. Shoot another one. Do a group of three? Yeah, Betsy wants you to waste your ammo and do three. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay with me. That will really reassure you, but this is pretty impressive. That is a nice, accurate shooting at 300 yards with any gun. Well, so I need a bench is what you're telling me. Pardon? I, so I need to take a bench to the field is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the next step after My this nice one. gun, a bench, and all that, and yeah. I'm good. All yeah, right. you're going to be good. I think that suppressor really helped the accuracy of this rifle. Yeah, I bet. Based on the last time I yeah, shot it. Compared it was, to, yeah, compared to it before. It did okay, but not this well. All right, here it goes.
Remember to keep your finger on that trigger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, now that it. one, you blew your group. Now yeah. you're out to about a three inch group. Oh, dang it. That's minute of angle, my friend. At 300 so, yards, so three I'm inches. Not a, is not a wonder, angle. wonder kid yet, huh? Yeah, this one is down where I expected the first one to be. Okay. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, five and a half inches low. Okay. Uh, but dead deer every time. All right. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah. We might march out there later and, and look, but we can check it on this film here when we put this thing on the big screen. Mm hmm Yeah. Want to try that plate? Sure. Yeah. I'd love to take okay. an attempt at that 400 if there's any. Yeah. We're going to do that too. Okay. All right. Let's okay. do it. Because you're dropping three to five inches. Yeah. You can at 300 yards hold a little bit higher. High shoulder, I would call it, rather okay. than dead center. Okay. Um, so on this plate, hold for the upper third. Okay. Right? There's a, still a white piece of paper that right. came with it. So straight above the white? Yeah, white piece of paper, a couple of inches or so, and it should drop it about into the middle of the target. Okay. And if you feel a strong wind from this side, yeah. at 300 yards, 5 mile an hour wind, 10 mile an hour wind is going to be moving that bullet. But no it's kidding, coming okay. and going. It's not consistent, and you're certainly not and having right a problem. Right up there, maybe the that paper. toe, but it's not as. Pardon? Maybe right there in that draw, it's not quite the. Yeah, I think you're getting some protection in that here. draw. We're we're a little more open here, so it seems like you can just hold dead on. Don't don't allow for windage. Dead on, upper okay. third of the target. We should hear a clang. Okay. I'm gonna listen dead for the on, clang. Upper third. Yep. And we are recording on the big lens, so we ought to see it hit. Bingo. Dang. Like that sound? I like that sound. That's satisfying, isn't it? So vertically, you're right in the middle, but the wind did get you over about four inches. It did? And I'm feeling, just before you shot, I thought, oh, that wind's coming up. I bet you're going to get some drift. Well, and, and I guess you got to be thinking about the wind the whole flight path, huh? Not just, uh, not yeah. just right there at the yep. end. And just before you shot, it picked up pretty stiffly right yeah. here. And I assume that it's when your wind starts blowing it right here. What, you, what the wind is doing is kind of giving it a new vector. The uh, bullet acts kind of like a weather vane, and it wants yeah. to heal away from the wind and put the nose into it and go down, and it moves it over, and it gets a new vector. It's got the downrange vector, yeah. and then it's got the wind vector moving That makes sense. So Just kind of like an airplane flies. Yeah. Crabbing a bit. Yep. All Crabbing right. it. Yep. Interesting. But again, that's your deer. You killed him. Nice. nice. So far, I've got shot. feeling pretty now, good. Might, might want to hang that for a couple of weeks because it'd be pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 400 yards. Yes. You want to try that? I do want to try Can that. Can you find up on that hill a target at 400 yards? It's a big, I think it's a 16 inch yellow disc. So right when now. I'm shooting uphill like this, yep. do I need to figure in a little bit more drop or what, what do I need to be thinking about? No, actually there's less drop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's weird. It has to do with trigonometry. Up or down, less drop. So you're going to shoot higher both ways. Up or down, both Up ways, down, shoot a yeah. bit higher. Yeah, most people think, well, if I'm shooting down, gravity's pulling right. it faster, so I'm going to shoot higher. If I'm shooting up, gravity's pulling it down slower, and I'll shoot lower. It shoots higher both times. Okay, well, that's good to know. That may be one of the reasons I missed a deer last year. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> the, the angle at which you're shooting, you look at that angle, and it's not that much. Okay. You're probably looking at 15%. And I have found that over the years, you got to be at least 20% angle beyond 250 yards before you start getting off your animal. Hmm. All right. So most people assume it's steeper than it is. Yeah. They're like, wow, that's really steep. And when you put a protractor on it or something, you look, well, it's really not that steep. It's pretty hard to get a really steep angle in the mountains and be able to see a target at the yeah. same time. So don't freak out about that just yet. We're going to okay. worry about a few other things first. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. All right, now here's what I'm gonna ask you to do is hold on the target for your windage yep. on the left side. Don't go off the steel plate, but hold on the kind of the edge, maybe on the inch, on the plate, but in very inch left. Into the steel on the left side. Okay. That'll give you a and good high. foot drop in. Now for the height, you gotta really come up. So four. 16, I think you're going to be dropping 18 inches. I would hold a little bit over the top of the plate. Okay. So 
imaginary line an inch in from the left and then straight up above you said about eight straight up until above. your horizontal reticle is above the plate just a little bit show just a little a bit, bit of daylight okay a bit of daylight yep. all right launch it when you're ready i'll hit record and i am recording your long distance shot in slow motion uh, I'm going to stop recording until you say you're ready because it takes forever for this thing to play out. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. Slow moment. So you say, okay, I'm about ready to shoot, and then I'll start. Okay, I'm about ready. Okay, I'm ready. Congratulations, you just got your first 400 yard steel plate. That was it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> wow. Now, you got the bottom corner of it. The bottom, which? The right corner. Bottom, bottom right. Okay, so the wind the took corner. it all the way from the Wind top took it left. over and it dropped a little bit more than we thought it was. So now hold about six inches over the plate. Okay. And just off the left edge, about two inches. Okay, so six inches above and about two inches off to the left yep. is what I'm looking for. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm roughed in. Are you ready? Almost. <clears throat> ready to launch? Ready. Go. That's it. Smackarooski, buddy. Look like you're maybe two-thirds of the way down, but almost dead center on your windage. Okay. Almost dead center on the windage. All right. Yeah. So. Wow. And that's what? We got a 10, 15-mile-an-hour wind, so. Nah, I don't think it's that much. Not even that much. Okay. I think you're probably looking at 8 to maybe 10. Who knows what it is doing down there. So but... if it's really clipping, I mean, that's a major, oh, major gosh, factor. Yes. Huh? So what you do with your ballistics calculations is you figure everything for a perfect right angle wind of 10 miles an hour, and then you extrapolate from there. Okay. So if the wind's really 20, you have to double it. Yeah. So if your chart says your bullet at your velocity is going to deflect 10 inches in a 10 mile an hour wind at whatever distance, if the wind's 20, it's going to double that. It's okay. going to be 20 inches of deflection. Okay. But then you have to learn to the art of reading it because like you said earlier, we're a little protected here with the trees, but then it opens up and there's a gap. And what if there's a canyon in between? And man, it gets real complicated. Yeah, 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 I bet. And who knows, the wind could be doing something different between you and it if there's a canyon in the middle. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. And uh, the FTW Ranch, where they do a lot of training for long range shooting and all sorts of other things, they will put smoke bombs out on this course that they've got oh, yeah, where there's I a see. draw going up. Yep. It's not all that hilly. It's hilly country, but it's not like the Rocky Mountains. But they'll drop bombs at 300 and 600 and 800 and 1,000, and you'll think, oh, the wind's from the left to the right. But you look at the smoke, and the yellow smoke's going that way, and the blue smoke's going the other way, and the other <laughs> one's going straight up. And it's like, how do I figure all that stuff? <laughs> it's an art form. Oh, I can see how that could be. It's another reason why you should just go willy-nilly trying to shoot stuff at 600 yards. Right. Takes a lot of work. Now, uh, your no, rifle great. is dialed in, dude. I think so. I feel good. And you are shooting beautifully off the bench. Now it's time to turn you into a field shooter. All right. Yeah. So that's we're going to shift things up. Part. We're going to pretend we're hunting. Going to put a pack on you. Get you some shooting sticks and learn how to shoot that way. Okay. It's a little tougher. I'm sure it is. Okay, Chase. I've got you all set up here as the hunter, wearing yes. my pack, and I've got my shooting sticks here for you. But I want to start teaching you a little bit about field position shooting. One of the steadiest all around positions is sitting okay i know a lot of hunters pr prefer prone because it is the most stable but as you can see with the grass around here and the roll yep. of the hills and everything else you can't always go prone right i'm not going to see that target yeah so sitting gets you above most of that stuff and kneeling is the next choice but let's just concentrate on sitting because i find it works for me about 90 percent of the time sure and i like these sticks out front rather than all sorts of other complicated options just because they're dead simple and extremely versatile because you can spread their height mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. and you can lean them forward to, to decrease it or back or close the sticks in to get increased elevation to shoot up a hill like your 400 yard target out there okay but i want to engage the 100 yard target even though now we're a good 20 yards closer but that's important for you to see that your bullet's not flying too high at this range it's actually going to be lower than it was at, at 100 okay so you're going to be dead on your animal but the critical thing you have to get is your back against something solid. Yeah. 
I can sit down and shoot off these sticks with nothing else to support me, but it's not nearly as solid yeah. as having a back support. So there's just not much here, but as a little bit of the brush in amongst this grass. I want you to get in front of it, get into a seating position, put that in the front of your gun, and see what you can come up with for steady. Back on, back off. Yes, I'm in the field. Well, that's part It'll of the program is do right, you want it on or off? What Sometimes that right. pack helps get up against something for a bit solid. Other times you're going to want to take it off and put it under your elbow. Okay. But I would recommend you try seeing how, how steady you can get with it is the way it is now. Okay. All right. Like, there's Let's a quick that. shot opportunity. Like, there's your buck. Yep. You got to sit down right now at the first little bit of back support you can find. Get those cross sticks up. Forend in them. Hold them just like that, just right yeah. at the cross? Or yeah, I that's my... what I generally do. Okay. And you'll, over time, you'll play around with that and see how you can spread one leg further than the other, bring one leg in if you need to get higher, get a good solid anchor on it, get your elbows in your legs. Now, on that 100-yard target, I don't want you to shoot the center where you've got it full of holes already. Okay. I want you to go for one of the other smaller targets. All right, just put it around in. If I can get this phone to work. I'd be in business. We're going for the 100 yard, not the 150. Right. Okay. Don't you let you. me know when you're ready. Get a picture and I'm going to go for, let's see. Where am I going to go for? I'm going to go for bottom left. Bottom left. Okay. Put ears Are you on. ready to shoot? Just about. All right. Get those ears on. You feel nice and steady? All yeah, right. I'm, steady I'm, enough. I'm recording. Go for it. Definitely didn't feel as steady as on the bench. Nope. You got your deer, but... Um, you're only inch and a half high, maybe two. I think it looks like an inch and a half, right on top of the uh, red diamond on that lower left. Yep. Yep. Okay. Not, not bad at all. It's a lot of work. Okay. You say it was a little bit uh, wobbly feeling? Yeah, I definitely felt wobbly. I was trying to hold my breath to hold it steady or at uh -huh. least breathe out real slow. and. Apparently, it's good enough at whatever that is, 80 yards, you know, but I don't yeah. think that's going to work at 300. No, probably not. Uh, it would be a lot poorer shot. Yeah. But you've obviously you've got support up front, yeah. so you're not bouncing up and down. Okay. Uh, but you're wiggling this way yeah. horizontally back here. We're going to pull that pack off now and show you a great way to use it. You're going to put it on your lap, essentially, under your arm. Okay. But on that leg, just like that. Yes. Okay. You could have it on the ground or your leg. You play around and make it work for you. Different packs feel comfortable and uncomfortable certain ways. Depending how. Me. Yep. And then just play around with it okay, and see what helps better. steady you down. Yep. You've got that bush behind you. It's a little bit wobbly, so get up tighter like yep, that. That's go. excellent. There you go. So yeah, just take your time to get nestled in, if you have time. And as you're practicing, you're going to gradually figure out more and more quickly getting into a good solid position. Yeah. Well, but this at, feels pretty decent right Yeah, here. at first you can take your time. And you could turn the power down on your scope too, because what a big problem hunters do is they've got a big powerful scope and they walk around with it on 15X or something, and then they get yep. a shot opportunity at 100 yards and it's too tight. Yeah, I've been there, done that. <laughs> Most of us have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so take another whack at it. Yeah. How about that left elbow? Just bed it in that pack is what you're saying. Kind of on the knee and the whatever, pack. Whatever. whatever makes you feel more solid. Yep. Camera is rolling. Hey. Where'd you hit it? I'm only a three quarter inches above and Half an inch to the left. There you go. That feels good. That'll work. Yeah. But I guess it should have been shooting higher right at that range. So I must have shot a little lower. But hey, it worked. Yeah. And that's okay. the guy, that's a good attitude. I mean, some guys are going to say, well, you didn't hit exactly precisely. We're not target shooting. We're hunting. Yeah. And you're in a field position. 
Yeah. What's the important thing is for you to realize, shoot, I might have been off an inch or two from where I was aiming, but I killed my deer. Yeah. That was more than good enough to park it where it needs to go. Right. So now let's try that gong at 200 yards. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get roughly dialed in on it. The 200 yard gong is what we're after. Yep. Okay. You feel good or you feel more wobbly or what? I feel more stable right now. Pressing back against that thing, got that bag. Keeping my elbow from flailing around, that helps a lot. Okay. Let me see what you've got going on here, yeah? You like what your elbow's doing out there? My left one or? Yeah. And the right. I would pick that leg up on the left elbow and give it some support. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, my left one feels like it's just kind of yeah, hanging out. Yeah, there you go. Hanging out, seeing what's going on. Yeah, you want as much contact with the body on the ground as you can get. Now, I noticed something, your big fat wide sling there that I'm not fond of is in your way because it's rubbery, yep. it's bouncy, it's between your sticks and your stock. Uh -huh. Get it out of that fork and have it hanging off to the side. Bingo. Maybe even off to the other side so it's not bothering mm -hmm. my hand? Yeah, one side or the other, whatever you like. That feels good. Yeah, feel good. Okay. Does it feel good and solid to you? It does, yeah. Tell me when you're ready to take a shot. Okay, I am ready. Anytime. Get on at that gong. Bang. Bang smack, another deer. That'll work it. Man, I'm getting a lot of deer today. Yeah, you're gonna get a 300 that yard right now. The freeze is gonna be full, the neighbors too. <laughs> Just don't call me over when it's time to cut meat. I'm tired of cutting meat. <laughs> I've cut up three animals already. Yeah, this that's month. the that's the part my wife tires of. All right, that feels that feels a lot better. Great. Now you're going to have a 300 yard target that's really only about 280. Okay. Get yourself right. solid and take a whack at it. I don't feel much of any kind of a wind right now, so I don't think you need to worry too much about. Uh, wind deflection, but Let's just go shoot a, shade it a couple of inches into the wind. So a couple that inches target or that um, the steel plate. Steel plate next to it. All right, so still yep. kind of the top third at that range. At this range, dead center. Um, let me think. Uh, Two eighty. You're dropping about three to four inches. Top of the white. Top of the white. Okay. All right. I'm ready. All right. Take it away. Bang. You hit the, the last spot you hit, you hit again. Oh, man. <laughs> You're just within an inch of it or less because it's just one big gray blob. I need right to find now. some metal deer so I know I hit it for sure. Then I won't wonder if I hit it or not if it <laughs> runs off a bit. Oh, what do you think about Mr. 400? <laughs> I'm I'm interested. I'm uh, interested in Mr. 400. <laughs> I'll pivot over uh, this way a little bit. Those two bushes on the top that are kind of a similar yep. height. Exactly. It's like directly the below. gap between the middle of them like a gun sight. Yeah, Perfect. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling for solid? I'm feeling pretty solid. I'm All feeling right. pretty good here. Tell me when you're ready to launch and I'll turn this camera on. So on this, at this range, 400 yards, uphill a little bit, but that doesn't actually matter so much, you're telling me. So I just need to figure in maybe a little bit of windage. A little shoot to the left. Yeah, the wind's picking up a little bit, so I would again hold on that edge. Don't go off the plate, but hold on that left edge into the wind. But then about six inches above. Yep. Be about right. You tell me when you're ready, and I'll turn on here. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Red eye. Yeah. Anytime, let her fly. Got another one. <laughs> I did not expect this, Ron. <laughs> that's fun. Isn't it? Oh, man, when you start to figure it out, gee, my knees, that's different. That feels good. Well, I am impressed with both the way you're shooting and the way that rifle is shooting. Yeah, well, I think I got to give credit to that, that rifle because apparently I need a good one. Otherwise, I'm hopeless. <laughs> now nah, you're doing beautifully. So I'm thinking we need to get you a chart. A ballistic chart made? Yep. You want to go in and do that on a computer? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And then you can take that home and whenever you get a chance to practice. Get yeah. Enough ammo, if you can find some more of that ammo. Yeah, yep, I've got another box in the truck. And get out in the field. I mean, anytime you want to come back here and shoot, just give me a Oh give man, me a shout, I sure man. appreciate that. This has been wonderful. 
we can r run you out to 600 one of these days. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, you're shooting beautifully. Yeah, friend. well, let's see how I can do. And I just hiked five miles and my heart's pumping. But Yeah, that's a good know. point, too. Let me let's talk to our, our viewers here. Folks, we hope you uh, picked up a few tips from this. Old Grandpa Ron teaching the young guys. Uh, you know, the, the school of hard knocks is the way I learned. I just missed everything and just took me forever to figure it out. He didn't have a mentor to teach me this stuff. Yeah. Everybody just shot at a bucket. If you could hit the bucket, you're ready to go deer hunting. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. But it, it's really this quickly that you can, once you know the stuff and you follow the directions, you can get on target this quickly. But don't assume that just because you've hit a couple of 400-yard targets now, you can go out there and, hey, there's an elk 400 yards, yep. boom. <laughs> you've got to really practice and be consistent with yeah. it. Well, and I've tried. I've tried things. I, when I practice, I often practice prone. And then when I get out there, I keep thinking, I'm going to just find a spot where I can hang, hang, lay down and just wait till a deer comes by. And it's never worked out for me. I knew about using a pack, but I never quite, I never tried it like that. And that mm -hmm. sure helped stabilize it. Yeah. You were telling me too, if you're taking a kneeling shot, things like keeping that rear foot, not toe to the ground, but in step to the ground. And you know, all these things just, yeah, yeah really help stabilize you. Yeah, and no, we could go on for video after video about all the different positions because kneeling is a good one to learn too. And then it's just some offhand techniques. Every once in a while you need to shoot offhand. Yep. But we also have some shooting sticks that really help out nicely with that. We can yeah. get those into uh, into that another time. So yeah, yeah, just play around. Don't be afraid to experiment with all sorts of things, tree limbs and posts and rocks and anything you can get to support yourself and your rifle. But don't just think you need to get your rifle onto a top of a fence post for instance and then you're going to be fine you've got to get your body stable as well yep. especially if the wind's blowing i learned years ago i thought man my my rifle is rock solid on this tree limb big old trunk that i'm on but i'm still moving what's going on well the wind was gusting and blowing me mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah well i'll do it yep all right hey thanks for tuning in folks ron spomer here with with uh, my good friend chase fly chase tell them what you've got going on on the internet you've got some good information on that. yeah you bet yeah we've got i've got a channel called outdoor empire here on youtube and you can go check that out we do a lot of gear reviews some hunting stuff but not so much the gun stuff that's why i'm here with ron to to get some tutelage that i was in grave need of but we do cooler reviews and other kind of camping gear reviews we also got a website at outdoorempire.com you can check out all right. And of course, you can always come back here to Ron's Bomer Outdoors for another video. We love doing them and we love all of your uh, advice and your corrections. If you've got any other good tips and hints for shooting steadily in the field, we're more than happy to entertain those and share them with the rest of our audience. Yeah. So this is Ron Spomer with Chase Fly on Honest to Shoot Straight.